Today we are unboxing and swatching Van Gogh watercolors. I have here a pocket studio set as well as eight tubes. So let's see how these compare and let's set, see how these student grade watercolors compare to other student grade watercolors on the market. So I paid $41 for this set at David Art Supply, but you can get the same set at Dick Blick for $24.74 or for $34.54 on Amazon. The tubes being student grade all come in one size and all come at one price. You get 10 milliliters for $2.96 over at Dick Blick and I'll have links in the description below for you guys. So inside of the 12 pan set, we get these colors y'all. Uh, we get 108, 227, 254, 269, 331, 370, 411, 506, 535, 516, 623, and 708. We also get a brush. Now, usually Dick Lick would say what's included in a set like this. It is not disclosing that. Ah, there we go. I've got it now. So we should have Azo Yellow, Chinese White, Permanent Lemon Yellow, Ultramarine Deep, Burnt Sienna, Matter Lake Deep, Permanent Red Light, Viridian, Cerulean Blue, Payne's Gray, Sap Green, and Yellow Ochre. And these tubes were assembled open stock throughout the year. Some came to me through Art Snacks. Some were purchased for the purposes of this review. We're going to be taking a look today at Azo Yellow Deep, Naples Yellow Red, Ivory Black, Ultramarine Deep, Phthalo Blue, Vermilion, Olive Green, and permanent orange. And they have a light fast rating in terms of little plus signs. And all of these seem to have three little plus signs. So, and the, the pigment information is also disclosed on the back of the tube for those of you who are interested. So these kind of ra remind me of the Grumbacher tubes we looked at recently. We are going to be doing our swatching today on Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton watercolor paper. I've already drawn some lines on it. That's going to be used for this portion of the test. And since I have eight more colors to test, I'm gonna wait till that dries and come back to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the pocket box. Van Gogh is produced by Royal Talons. This is made in the Netherlands and the travel brush they've included looks incredibly cute. So I'm excited to get this little set opened up. It comes in a nice matte plastic palette. It's got a push open, so it's not gonna just open. Oh, yes it will. If you really force it, it will, but it shouldn't just pop open in your bag. Now, supposedly the lid comes off. What I think re they really mean is this pops out for easy cleaning. Let's remove the little brush and set that aside. Oh, that is incredibly cute though. It's even, it's even been um, molded, I guess, in a way that you can use this for scraping effects. Very lightweight plastic, very simple, synthetic, but very cute. Let's see if I can pop this tray out. That's one of the selling points, so. Can you imagine how hard that's gonna be when it's full of paint that you're trying to clean out? All right, that actually wasn't so bad. It's fairly solid plastic. It snaps into the lid, so if you just wanted a larger mixing space, you could use it like that, or if you just wanted to have your palette in a different area. So once you know the trick, in fact, it looks like there's even a little, ah -ha -ha. oh man, this is well designed. Yeah, not only is this designed to scrape, you can actually, let's pop this in really securely. Yeah, you can pop it out with its brush, cute. All right, so we have our pigment information here on these pans. I'm gonna hold on to it. 
And there's like a freeze warning on it. I think we're safe here. Ooh, okay. So this is actually sticking to the pants. And these pans are removable, so you could replace them. I really like this little palette. This is a bit like the Lucas palette, where I have a feeling I'm gonna like the palette more than I like the paint. And this is a little map of our paint. So I'm gonna keep this here until we get around to swatching everything. And like I said, the little half pans pop out very easily. They have the same sort of thing where you can um, use the brush to kind of pry them out. It's actually quite a clever design. A little bit of sticky was left on my palette. You maybe could clean that off. Like there's a fair amount of sticky. Uh, you can maybe clear that off though with rubbing alcohol. So let's go ahead and start swatching these and start talking about the colors inside this cute little palette. For today's review, I'm gonna be using a Princeton Snap Synthetic. This is pretty student grade, not bad. A larger round, very inexpensive. I think I paid like $3 for this, so not the worst. And I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch everything. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my swatching method, I usually do a mass tone at the top on the opaque line then I do gradiated washes, and then I usually end with mass tone swatches, although my hand did get a little bit off track here towards the bottom. So I will do that and then I'll check in with you guys. Okay, so now that these are dry, um, I felt like there were a lot of optical brighteners used in these paints. The colors swatch really bright, but gunk up on your brush. So this might be good if you're just doing like one layer watercolor or flat washes. I also noticed that even for just swatches, we ended up consuming a little chunk of paint there. And as much as I like this palette, there could be room for so many more pans in here. It's kind of a lot of wasted space. So next, I wanna talk about the pigments with you guys and I wanna do some lift testing. So we have our pigment handy right here. So Chinese white, which is this one here, has PW4. Permanent lemon yellow is PY184. Permanent red light is PR254. Ultramarine Deep is PB29, which is pretty common for ultramarine. Sap Green is P1, PY129, PG7. Yellow Ochre is PY42. Azo Yellow Medium is PY154, PO62. Matter Lake Deep is PR264. Cerulean Blue Thalo is PB15, PW6, and PW6 is a white pigment, and that's pretty commonly used in terms of optical brighteners, although it's the only one, the only PW6 I've seen on this lineup, except for the PW4 used in Chinese white. Viridian, PG7, and then Burnt Sienna is PR101, PBK11. And finally, Payne's Gray, which is a nice inclusion, is PBK6, PV19. So I'm gonna get these labeled and I'm gonna do my lift test and I'm gonna do that using a synthetic brush.
I found these Van Gogh half pan watercolors to be very prone to lifting. Most of them seem to be single pigment. There are a couple of dual pigment, double pigment colors like cerulean, like sap green, like Payne's gray, and like burnt sienna, which is a little unusual because at least for burnt sienna um, and sap green, those, hmm, I think they are often single pigment, but I could be wrong there. I'd have to double check. The colors are really vivid. They're really pretty. They remind me a lot of some of the Japanese and the Korean watercolors I've tested. They also remind me of Lucas watercolors. But if you're looking to do a lot of layering, a lot of blending, these don't seem like they would be the best fit for you. But fear not. Often where student grade half pans fail, student grade tube watercolors seem to do a little bit better. And today is a dual review. We're gonna be taking a look now at the Van Gogh tube watercolors. Now, I wasn't trying to get a perfect set since I was also purchasing these, but I think I have enough that we can kind of compare the two. For the purposes of today's review, I am going to swatch these colors two ways. I'm going to swatch them when they're fresh from the tube and then I'm gonna let them dry out for a while and then I'm gonna swatch them again. And I have found that with cheaper watercolors, tube dried can be hit or miss. Either it works really well or it's a failure. So that's why I think it's important to test both. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill some half pans and these are just Meaden half pans I got on Amazon for fairly cheap. I'm gonna fill these half pans and I'm going to record the information on the sides of these half pans so it's a little bit easier for me to keep track of everything. So something I noticed as I was cleaning up my desk to make room for this, as I was kind of like fiddling around with this palette, seeing, you know, if it would work well for field work, how does it fit in your hand? It's actually a moderately well-balanced palette. Yeah, this side is a lot heavier than this side, but I feel like it's not gonna tip, especially if I'm holding it and there's space back here. And I know my all my pans probably just fell. Um, there's space back there for your your finger. So, you know, I could see this being okay for like field work or for travel, that sort of thing. But it says Van Gogh, the quality brand. And anytime a company does something like that, it always, yeah, I don't know, there's something about me and my personality where I just wanna like, really, let's see. So. I am thinking I'm going to do a student grade showdown soon where I swatch various student grade paints on fluid easy block and fluid 100. So cellulose paper and a cotton rag paper. And we can kind of see which one, which brands perform better than others. Um, I will also say this as much as I love David Art Supply, they're a locally owned art supply store in the greater New Orleans area. And every time I'm in that area, I go and I spend a pretty hefty chunk of change. I love David Art Supply, but their, their children's grade, their student grade, and their hobbyist grade art supplies are not worth the prices. So if you're shopping at David's, just buy the professional stuff because the price difference isn't that significant and you're gonna be a lot happier with what you're getting. Because I know I overpaid for these tubes. So I'm gonna swatch using the same method I swatched with before. Then I'm gonna allow these half pants to dry out for a week and I'm gonna re-swatch them. Now usually I'll dab these on like my work surface but you know, that makes a lot of mess. It creates a lot of waste. So I'm kind of hoping this method will work better.
already, I like the two watercolors a bit better than the half pan watercolors. These haven't had a chance to dry, but I have several colors in similar, uh, <laughs> several colors in common and, um, or very similar, like I have Azo Yellow Medium versus Azo Yellow Dark, and those almost look like they're the same color. I have Vermilion instead of Permanent Red Light. I have Ultramarine Deep in both. Um, I guess that's where the simul similarities end. I also have like permanent orange, but I just liked how these went down. They didn't feel like they were as full as opti of optical brighteners. It feels like they might be a little bit more transparent, but you know, we're only going to know that after these have had a chance to dry. So these lifted up just about as much as the half pan versions. Some might be a little bit more staining, but they still seem like if you were doing a layered or a glazed watercolor painting, there would be a fair amount of muddiness and lift up, even if you're using a quality watercolor paper, like a cotton rag paper. I'm going to let these dry out for a week. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use this remainder of the page to do those swatches. So I'm just gonna block off eight squares and I'll do my comparative swatches with these after they've had a chance to dry out. All right, friends, it has been a week. Our Van Gogh tube watercolors have had a chance to dry. So let's go ahead and finish up this field test. And just a friendly reminder, uh, you, this, well, first off, this isn't a field test. I apologize. This is an unboxing swatch. But I always have my field tests in a separate video. That way, people who are interested in something a little bit more in depth can come back. Those who are just looking to see if it has the right colors for them or if it's a set that's interesting or a set with a lot of optical brighteners, that way they can decide quickly if it works for them. So I am going to just go ahead and I don't even think I'm gonna pre-activate these. I've had so many tube watercolors basically turn to mush. When I pre-activate them, I'm not sure it's worth it. So we are here on our tube swatch sheet. Do a little bit of a gradiated blend so we get kind of a range of the color. And there's a nice black swatch down the middle so we can tell whether or not they retain their opaque properties if they've been dried. Some watercolors do change quite a bit actually. Some uh, are not quite as pigmented when they've been dried in tubes. A lot of the Daniel Smith Fine Text don't quite reactivate the same. That's why I do these tests. But they seem to handle quite nicely from the tube. They do, however, cloud the water fairly quickly which is always a sign that optical brighteners are afoot. And I do use that term a lot here on this channel, especially when I'm talking about watercolor. I have a blog post that explains why optical, blue, cannot talk today. Why, why optical brighteners might be something that you wanna avoid. So I'm gonna let these dry and then we're gonna swatch the bottom four. So I found that most of the colors in this little set I've made reactivate fairly well. Maybe not quite as intense as they were initially, particularly the ultramarine, but if this is an easier format for you to handle, by all means, go this route. I've also noticed that economically, tube watercolors just tend to be a little bit cheaper in the long run. You can usually get two to three fills from a tube 
Um, whereas buying like pre-filled half pans, often the half pans themselves will cost as much as a tube of the watercolor. So if you really, really want to try Van Gogh watercolors, if you really, really want to use them yourself, I would recommend you go with the tubes over the half pans. However, um, the, they've currently kind of redone this set so that uh, the space here, which I think I commented earlier in the video, is wasted. Uh, they filled that with three pans and they're basically treating it like a bonus. So you are getting 15 pans rather than 12. But what I really would have liked to have seen with a set like that is just some, like this rather, it's just some room to grow. I do think there are quite a few neat innovations that make me really want to like this set. I really like the design of the travel brush. I really like that this is just completely removable. I like that you can use this also to pop out your half pans and replace it. I love the design of the container, honestly. It feels sturdy, it feels good in the hand. There's a slightly matte touch. It's one of the, you have to push button to open it, although you can force it if you want to. So I like the design. I would love to see this design used with like a Daniel Smith palette or a Winsor Newton palette or just a nicer palette. So I never really talked about the tiny brush that comes in the set. It is a number six brush. It doesn't say a size six brush. It says a number six brush with selected filament. It is entirely synthetic. Um, so I think before I say goodbye to you guys, I'll give it a test since it is part of the set. All right, so I have a cup of water just slightly off camera. We're gonna remove the sizing that is in this brush. And that can be done really simply with just a little bit of clean water. And I recommend for those of you who are not familiar that you do remove the sizing before you attempt to paint for the first time tend to have better results that way. All right, so I have little hands. Some people say I have like child size hands, like tiny hands. This is a small brush for my hands. Um, if your hands are prone to cramping, if you have difficulty holders, holding smaller brushes, if you get tired of holding pencils um, or tired from holding pencils, this brush is gonna ag aggravate all of those. And I'm just going to don't have any scrap watercolor hand. All right, I've got some Fabriano Studio paper here, which is not great, but it is watercolor paper and it can be used to test out this brush. And we're gonna at least start with the half pans. All right, seems to have decent snap. Let's try treating it like a liner. Yeah, you could even kind of do some inking with this if you want. The only real problem is how small the handle is. And I know some people will put like a pencil grip on theirs, but this is a travel um, watercolor brush. So some wet into wet. Yeah, definitely already makes my fingers want to cramp. So I think this brush design in a larger size, even not even longer, just a l wider size would already be good. I do like the longer bristles though. Um, usually I'm not a fan of synthetics because they don't hold a lot, a lot of water. They tend not to have a belly and sometimes they can get drippy. Mm, given that this is a longer brush, I'm not necessarily noticing those problems though. Very, very springy. So if you like a springy brush, this is definitely one of them. I know some people like synthetics or stiffer bristle brushes because squirrel can be very difficult to control. It can be just really floppy, like a wet noodle kind of brush. This is the opposite of this. This is that it's so al dente that it's almost undercooked, but I kind of like it. I wonder if they sell this as like a brush set. Let's do a little bit of layering because one of the problems, another one of the problems I have with these synthetic brushes is they tend to scrape up prior layers. They also tend to be terrible for glazes. Oh, we'll see. Interesting that the yellow kind of forms almost a resist with the blue there. 
I like this wet and to wet over here. That's interesting. And that was just scarlet red with some ultramarine with a little bit of yellow ochre. I didn't think about it. Sorry. Mixed in there. Honestly, just kind of noodling around with this test, I want to do a mud test, like a full mud test, which I usually do for the nicer brands. I don't always do them for the cheaper brands just because, you know, I kind of feel like they're going to turn into mud anyway. All right, I'm going to let all these little swatches dry and then we'll come back to it. This has had a chance to dry. Let's go ahead and attempt a second layer. Now, to be fair, a mm, little bit of lifting. This is inexpensive cellulose base paper. And that does tend to be the paper the most likely to lift. However, these are also inexpensive student grade watercolors. So I feel like these are kind of a match for one another. And it is the most likely combination that people using the set would probably use. So I think with these, if you're going to do glazes, you should try to be light handed about it and maybe use something a little softer than this synthetic brush. Something else that puzzles me is when they include a travel brush like this, they always include such small sizes. When we're really recommended to paint with the largest brush we can comfortably paint with or comfortably control. So that's always been something that's kind of puzzled me is with these travel sets, why do they include tiny little liner brushes? Or if they're gonna include a liner brush, why not include, you know, a small one and then a larger round, something like that. If you hold this brush loose, if you don't try to like crunch up on it, it's not so bad. Let's see now. I don't normally do any scraping techniques in my own watercolor, but this works quite well for it. Of course, it needs to not be on necessarily soaking wet paper. Let me zoom in, because often it'll just like go back in to fill it, but you can also use it to kind of sketch in on your wet area. So this does work quite well for that. You should probably clean it off. And it's also designed, like I demonstrated earlier, to remove pans from the palette and to remove the mixing wells. So that is our unboxing swatch for the Van Gogh 12 color set, as well as eight of the Van Gogh tube watercolors. I hope you guys will keep an eye out for my upcoming field tests for this. I think I'm gonna do a couple depending on my time. One where I just do flat colors because I think that is something this set will excel at. It's just beautiful, flat, intense colors. And then another where I try to do layering and color mixing and glazes and we'll see how that handles. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, it was a pleasure. Hopefully I'll see you guys again in the near future with another wonderful watercolor video. If you're looking for more watercolor content, make sure you stick around, consider subscribing. I do loads of watercolor stuff here on this channel every week. If you want something a little bit more in depth or something very comics focused, why not head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. It's a series of watercolor tutorials designed to get people painting comics, painting illustrations, and it walks you through everything you need to know. So as always, it was a pleasure and hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.